Hello, hope everyone's doing well. I want to make a video guide on the Azure Lane main campaign uh, ship drops and gear drops because a new server just came out. So there's maybe a bunch of new players coming in. Or maybe if you've been playing for a bit and it's like, you know, I'm not feeling you have the best units or you're not sure what you want to be farming. That's what this video is going to be about is just the main campaign. I will do War Archives at a different time. But let's, uh, let's go just start with good old 1-1 one, one, or chapter 1. Uh, the first three maps just get to three stars. That's all you need to worry about. They just drop the uh, common destroyers. Don't worry about that. 1-4 does have some worthwhile stuff to farm. Uh, you can get the rammer. Nice firepower and reload buff. You can get the uh, some guns. You know, not great, but... If you get them, and these are blueprints, by the way, so you have to get X amount, like 15 or 10 or 20, to uh, actually unlock them. Oh, it's usually, okay, it looks like it's 5, so you have to farm too much if you want to get the rammer. I don't know where it's at, but yeah, that's not too bad. So for gear, I'd say the rammer might be worthwhile if you just want a little more firepower. You'll probably get better gear soon if you just keep pushing, but this is about what you want to farm in each stage, so I'll just go in detail. As for ships, let me pull up the little thing here. Go down to 1-4. Uh, you have Renown, Repulse, and Long Island as the ones here that are above common rarity. Renown is definitely the one to go for. She's a Royal Navy battlecruiser, and she's a slightly better version of Repulse, who's also a battlecruiser from the Royal Navy. Um, they're both decent if you want to farm Monarch and PR1, so that's going to be good pickups. I use Repulse up until Chapter 10-ish, and she was serviceable up until there. Uh, I didn't bother farming Renown, because I didn't know she dropped in the stage at that point in time. So hopefully, you know, this if you want to get her, She's got a nice design, nice blonde. And she got a good skill. I didn't get her till I was on like chapter 12. I was like, oh, chapter 11 has her, so I'll go get her then. Yeah, and then Repulse has the extra reload when she's attacked. It's okay, I guess we get hit by a lot of planes. It's a reload, uh, reload buff. That's fine. But I would say... Renown is definitely the one to go for. And I believe uh, Repulse and Long Island, you both get from the starter missions or like from the starter fleet. Uh, yeah, Long Island's okay. She's rare. She goes up to Elite with a retrofit. That's a lot of stuff you need to do. So you need to farm hard mode, which is the chapter of the stage four of every chapter is hard is a uh, carrier clearance. Buffs the aviation stat. That's fine. It doesn't apply to herself, and to use this most effectively is to make sure she has fast planes. Otherwise, she'll go last, and she won't buff anyone for eight seconds. Yeah, so there's no way your planes are reloading in time for that to be worthwhile. And yeah, so for chapter one, there's not a whole lot to look out for here. It's whatever. It's, a, it's the first chapter of the game. It's not difficult. Chapter 2, let me go over to that browser, pull it up for you. You start getting the starters, which is nice, so you get extra copies for the starter of your choice. If there's a, if one of the other starters you really liked, but you only, you only pick one at the beginning, you can grab her. Um, and also, you want to get them. Because once you get their star rank, their loot break, aka their stars up, you unlock Ayanami. Which is a very strong destroyer, uh, torpedo destroyer. She's very good at firing torpedoes. Does a lot of damage, very nice. Is using a lot of team comps. All the, well less so now, there's other options, but, you know, she's always here. She's always available. Not limited to an event. Doesn't need a super special piece of equipment to get her retrofit. And these all have retrofits, so they'll go up to SR, SSR, so they become gold. 
Uh, London's here. She's using tank. Haven't really used her. She gets a lot better with her retrofit. So she buffs her Vanguard's firepower, which is nice if you have some other cruisers in there. But when you uh, retrofit her, it's another skill that does double damage. That's nice and buffs her own accuracy. That's good. And it's, you know, a nice amount of stat buffs from a retrofit. Uh, these bunch, I wouldn't really worry about other than for collection or if you really like their design. Smoke screen, it's whatever. There's other options that are a lot better. And it wouldn't be hard to get them just for the uh, fleet tech points. That way you can unlock the PR ships and get them going. Like Tennessee just has like a uh, reduced damage buff. And California is an extra damage buff. Yeah, double damage. There's nothing too special there. As for gear, some more blue gear. This is whatever. Uh, the hydraulic steering gear wouldn't be a bad option when you're starting out if you get a couple. Just because it gives plus HP plus speed, which is really nice. Until you get the uh, the gold, referred to as the washing machine. Let me pull that over there and show you that. That guy looks like the high performance hydraulic steering. So this gives more HP, more evade, and gives a chance to evade all attacks every 20 seconds. So that's really good. That's kind of my standard for survival gear for ships. All right, and then 2-2. Two, two. You have the naval camouflage. That's the exact same stats as hydraulic steering gear, so either or. Um, I would. I guess I'll recommend this stage over stage uh, two dash one. I think Pennsylvania is a bit more useful in the early game, and there's some other useful ships here. So have the starters again, or not? Sorry, I mean Pennsylvania, but Arizona. So Arizona gets a healing ability, which is really nice. And then once you get her augment gear, which to unlock augment gear, the ship must be at full limit break. And then you can equip that. It's a extra heal, fire special barrage. Her fires her main guns. She has a chance to heal the Vanguard fleet. So yeah, that's just an extra buff on top of her regular Eagle Sears. That's nice. Pennsylvania, I would just worry about getting uh, Arizona instead. Is a barrage. It's whatever. Uh, gritty, gridly. Buffs uh, torpedoes of your destroyers, which could be nice. And double torpedo is also kind of nice. But she is a rare unit. So her chance for growth is kind of limited because she does have retrofit. Brooklyn buffs firepower cruisers as a all assault as you know usual shoho is one i would recommend for an extra healer uh heals your vanguard for eight percent hp and she gets the air support skill so like long island which is better and it shows up to elite rarity so i would say shoho is worthwhile getting and then retrofitting her just so you have a healer uh what is unfortunate is that without her augment gear and then yeah so with their base skills they only heal the vanguard so as long as you're not getting completely screwed by planes you'll be okay as for two three start, uh starters again you have the air radar which is just the first piece of piece of elite gear you can get it's nice aa buff I know there's a boss that is uh, planes coming up. Fire extinguisher. If you're facing much enemies that have HE guns that light you on fire, you can deal with it a little bit uh, better. Highlight it there. It translates up. Whatever. Um, reduce fire damage. Reduce catching fire and reduce duration of fire. So that's nice. Shoho's here again. Uh, you have some of the Fletcher class girls here. Want, I'd recommend starting to get them 
because once you get a enough of them and a certain amount so i believe fletcher uh charles arburn is there too i don't know if thatcher's one we unlock the beaver tag which is a really nice piece of auxiliary gear that buffs hp speed evasion i think gives a 20 percent speed buff to your fleet once equipped so that's really nice Thatcher, whatever. Uh, the Elite for this stage, Nelson, she's got a nice barrage. So if you like her design a bit better than uh, Renown, where you'd rather have the barrage than the extra firepower, then that could be uh, an option. Norfolk, uh, Shield. I think you should get Indianapolis from the starter mission, so probably not as good as her. I think Ridley's still here. And get some planes if you want. And then 2 4, probably one of the other good stages for this uh, world. Yeah, destroyer gun. It is. It's AP, so it's not as good for the early game. Oh no, it's not a destroyer gun, sorry. My apologies. It's a cruiser gun. Some destroyers can uh, equip it, but most cannot. So it's better for heavy armor enemies, or enemies with shields, which you don't face too many in the early game. So it's nice for the extra firepower buff just from equipping it. It's nice. Um, Rodney is basically Nelson, but different design, different personality. So you kind of pick and choose which one of those do you like better or run both. Both are good for farming one arc. Uh, we have Lexington here too. He's pretty decent. Her sister Saratoga is better. Saratoga has different skills, has a retrofit, and people and she's well loved because she uh, has a ton of skins. Joho's here too, so this would wouldn't be a bad stage to farm. Achilles uh, can slow heavy cruisers. Does extra damage to medium armor. There's firepower. It's whatever. Uh, Ix, basically the same. Yeah, exactly the same as Achilles. So, if you want to get one of these two or both, whichever one suits your fancy. Uh, Kent, you'll probably be seeing her a lot if you're doing when you're doing polls. Uh, assault order, actually, that's not too bad. Kind of nice. Extra twenty five percent damage. Uh, every 20 seconds, so if you could time that right with your airstrikes and or your battleship barrages, that'd be pretty nice. Extra damage. Uh, overall, her stats aren't the greatest because she is a rare ship. And, yeah, that's great. Suffolk, also get her from uh, builds a lot. Extra, fi extra chance to fire a gun. Double, uh, increased firepower, so kind of nice. But once again, a uh, rare ship. So it's held back by her lack of retrofit and low stats because of her rarity ranking. Chapter 3. Now this is the one where you'll want to start farming. This is a, this is a good farming chapter. Let me pull that bad boy back up. Uh, you get the fuel filter. They, uh... Survival gear, pretty nice. A lot of HP when you get fully leveled. Decent amount of speed. That's nice. You can get, I believe this is a fighter. Yeah, it's a fighter. Um, I haven't really used it. But if you have a ship that gets a buff from having Eagle Union gear equipped, this is an option. Blue stuff. Uh, you have Soryu and Hiru. They work nice together. They both buff each other while they're together. Uh, she kind of has a bunch of extra ships she flies off, or planes she flies off. That's nice. Uh, but I would say Hiru is a bit better than Soryu. Because she has Final Counter which lets her uh, become invis invincible for quite a bit of time. So if you uh, 
another good ship for PvP, even to this day, because she can have that survive for a bit longer, fire off an extra airstrike, and win you the battle. That's nice. Uh, she also has this. I thought she had a skill called Scraps. Maybe that's Hiru meta I'm thinking of. Most likely. Houston, nothing special. Increases her evade, so could be an okay tank. Uh, but she does have light armor, so be aware of that. She does not have medium or heavy. So HE damage is going to be a bit more on her. And then uh, Galatea, Arthrusia. I think they just increase reload. And full firepower. So, they're there. Nothing special. Uh, Northampton, artillery commands like Brooklyn. It's again, nothing too special. Chicago, uh, double damage. It's nice. But this is the stage you want to start farming. 100%. This is the one. You get the Starter Destroyers. You get Soru and Hero. You get Charles Auburn, Osborne for the uh, Beaver Tag. Really nice. Fortune is here. Hammond and Sims are here. These two are here. Galtia and Fusia. Did I go over the gear? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, Fortune, I think she's in Chris Surveyed. And Roos's main fleet damage by 15%. So if you're having issues with planes getting to your back line and they're doing a lot of damage, that could be an option. Sims, Firepower of Destroyers, Special Barrage, that's nice. Smokescreen, uh, be aware that this is if she has her Augment gear. And this is a retrofit skill. And then Hammond. Uh, also decreases the damage your flagship takes. So this is just your flagship, not like Fortune, which is your whole back line. Anti-air mode decreases firepower for a change of buffing anti-air power. So it's uh it's okay. It's a trade-off. So just be aware that her gun will main gun will do less damage, but it'll do more to planes. As for gear. You have the uh, the Elite Steam Catapult, HP and Aviation for your carriers. Very, very nice. Make sure you get some of these. And there is a gold version of that, so you get that later on. This main gun for destroyers, pretty nice. You can equip it on submarines too. It can be in secondary. It's HE, so I like it. Uh, it's kind of my, one of my budget options. I've given to a lot of submarines just so they have a gun. So overall, pretty nice. But the the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme, is the dive bomber, the uh, hell diver. This is for a long time the best in slot dive bomber on anyone. It's very fast. It's rate of fire, so that's nice. It has good bombs. You can upgrade it into the experimental version, which is a slight upgrade. I think it's slightly slower. So if you're once you're doing OPSI and get that, you can upgrade there. But overall, this as it is, incredibly good. I can't say enough. It is extremely good to have this. So make sure you get a couple of these for your various aircraft carriers. Because once you have them on there, there's little reason to take them off. Charles Osborne, I haven't really used her. She uh makes more speed. Escort fleets evasion. Is that the Vanguard? I'm not sure. Full firepower. Okay, but she's just a destroyer, so it's not the best amount. And then she uh she's with the other uh excuse me. Some of the other Thatcher class, or Fletcher class, specific ones. 
then increases crit rate. Um, heals if they drop below. If they are one of these, um, let me just look at this. The main reason to get her and rank her up is to unlock this. This is very, very good. Increased movement speed of all ships by 20%. So if you're running a heavy cruiser or a large cruiser as your tank, and you don't have fast destroyers in your fleet that can make up for the lack of speed that those two have, this can help make it up. So you run a heavy cruiser or a large cruiser and the two light cruisers, and you won't suffer too much from speed. Or if like an EX stage comes up and you want to have a light a destroyer that just runs around nonstop, like Shimakaze or Udachi or Lomalan or La Terrible, all the French destroyers are kind of really fast. That's another good option. And this bunch, they're there. If you like them, go get them. Uh, you get a purple AA gun. You can get a purple torpedo. You start getting a bit stronger torpedoes. That's nice. These are not homing, so they do they do more damage, and they're better for manual play, so you can aim them a bit better. So they'll fire it with this uh four degree. Cone pattern. You know, that's a, it's a decent start. Uh, any AA gun you have is nice. The higher rarity, the better. That's not too picky on what you need. Dive bomber. Just go with the hell diver. That's that's your best option. Go with the hell diver. Let's see. Indianapolis is here. So you can get extra copies of her. It's another tank. Pretty nice. I used it for a while. I believe you also get Portland, and Portland gets better skills when they're together. So that's an option, but be aware that their speed is low, so having the beaver tag is very helpful for her. And any heavy cruiser you're using. Uh, some Japanese destroyers I'm not going to try and pronounce. It's probably going to sound inappropriate. Uh, torpedo stat, nice. I mean, it is what it is. Another torpedo stat buff, double torpedoes. I mean, that gets buffed even more with our augment gear. And then... Reduced reload of enemy skills. That's, that could be too bad. Could be nice. And I'll make sure to link the, uh, the wiki in the description so you can come check this out yourself and do more thorough dive. And at the bottom of every character screen, it shows where they drop from. And also available in War Archives. So that's nice of them. Alright, excuse me, I need to pause for a second there and drink some water. Uh, Fortune, Achilles, Ix, they're there too. If you like them, go for them. This one, another good one to farm for multiple reasons. Repair Toolkit. You only get, this only goes with the Elite Rarity, so this is top tier survival gear, always. This is extremely useful, extremely helpful, and you can farm it really early on with other good things in the stage, so you're not feeling like you're missing out because you have to go and waste time, not be able to farm any good ships, or just one piece, for just one piece of gear. But this is extremely helpful. Let me go check and see how many prints you need to unlock it. Scrolling down. Need 10, so it's not too bad for unlocking it. But the uh, the other really good reason to farm this stage is... Oh, I don't have... Why is Sakagi not there? Maybe I got her from a... A yeah, little selection ticket, I'm not sure. But you get Akagi and Kaga from this stage. And so this stage is thusly named the Fox Mines. Because you just come here and farm these two. Uh, they have a very fur very fast first airstrike, which is very good. Helps you clear the stage fast. Uh, they were using PvP for a while. Not as good. And when they're together. They buff their own aviation stats. And Akagi can be with uh, Kaga or Cargo Battleship 
from one of the events. And then Kaga has more options with Akagi, Akagi-chan, and Akagi moves. So that's nice. And yeah, basically the same. So they function the same. You'd like to use them together. Just be aware that it takes a long time to farm them. At one point, the uh, the drop rate for these two was known, but I don't remember it. It was a special notes at the bottom. There's not. But definitely try and get those two if you have if you want to wait and you know give yourself a boost later on it's worth the investment let's see yorktown's here uh she buff sends a squadron a uh, airstrike squadron which gets hit also has a heal and then increases damage to your vanguard which is okay if you like her design then or you like personality that's fine to use her as always, yeah, it's, if you like them, use them. You can use largely whoever you want up until the end game. Game's pretty forgiving. And if even if it's you're struggling a bit, as long as you're not in chapter 14, you can just over level and use whoever you want. Houston's here again. She is what it is. Portland's a really good tank. I believe you get a free copy of her from her uh, from the starter missions. So make sure to do that. The skill isn't the greatest because if you have to use Indianapolis, which means you have less speed and they both have 26 speed, which is not great. But defense order is really good. And I don't know, she doesn't even get a skill from a retrofit. That's kind of so unfortunate for good old Portland, but uh, it is what it is. You get CA gun, CD gun, secondary. There's a bunch of spots to get her. I guess I missed her in chapter 4 1. Oh, no, I'm still in chapter three. That's right. And yeah, there's a couple places you can also get her from uh, beginner missions, clear 2-1, metal shop, guild shop. So it's decently easy to get copies of her. And then we move over to chapter four. I don't remember too much about chapter four's drops, unfortunately, so I'll have to Lay it off. Oh, no, this this is a good map, too. 4-1. Saratoga is here. Uh, let's go over here first. Torpedo Bulge. Survival Gear. A uh, bunch of HP. Reduce damage from torpedoes. So if you're facing a node that has a ton of destroyers in it that just spam torpedoes, this is a good option to have. Uh, it can't be used by destroyers. Just be aware of that. That only goes up to Elite. Blue, this is an AA gun that gives firepower, too, which is, oh, it's a DD gun that gives uh, anti-air. There's another piece of gear that's a anti-air gun that gives firepower, so that's also nice. So, it's pretty nice uh, if you want to give a little extra AA to your destroyers, or as uh, a secondary for a lot of ships, yeah. Charles Auburn's here, um, and there's that pair of torpedoes again, a gun, and then uh, let's go Phoenix before we go to Saratoga. She was a lot better when before the oil cap was implemented, but for lower difficulty, she's also nice, along with Cassin and Downs, because she has her healing ability. So if you run her with, say, an Arizona or a Shoho, then... It could be nice for more like Arizona than Shoho because Arizona can fire at suicide boats trying to ram. She heals, extra firepower, that's nice. She rises up again like the Phoenix, makes sense. Saratoga. This is a very good ship. Um, you can get her from Medal of Honor shop. Drops 4, 6, 10, 12, 13, but if you get her on sooner, that's a lot better. Uh, she gets a barrage with a gun that scales off her aviation level of skill. So get to 10, have a good aviation set on her. You're good to go. That's nice. Uh, buffs Vanguard. It's damage. And can also special air strike. So she's basically the same. I think prior to retrofit, the same as Sister Lexington. 
but she has a retrofit. She has extra skill that bumps her over the top. Uh, fighters, double dive bombers. So if you have, gets you some uh, hell divers. Run double hell diver on her. Very nice. I'd recommend going for her if you didn't go for the foxes. She's a lot easier to get too. This one we have London Shigure, believe she buffs evasion, and she's retrofitted. And you have Yukikaze. She can fire an extra barrage and uh, do damage taken. Has a slight heal, so. But you need to have Yukikaze, so you probably want to run a uh, either a kind of tanky light cruiser or a heavy cruiser with the beaver tag just so you can move around a bit more, and these two aren't getting hit so much. Uh, Yukikaze is pretty evade tanking, I believe, so is Shigure. So that's an option to have. Drop shards here. Um, I would just say use London instead. But if you like her more in London, like her design, like her personality, by all means. Uh, with London and Shropshire, they can use DD guns that are secondary after retrofit. So that's something you want to do instead of torpedoes. That's an option. I prefer, for the most part, to have use light cruisers that have a DD gun secondary. It's a personal preference. Here, the light cruiser gun. This one's HE, so it's a nice stock gun. We have an AA, a DD gun, more firepower than the uh, other one we just saw. So it's normal, so you don't get the armor piercing effect or the burning effect. Be aware of that. This is pretty decent for heavy cruisers in the early game. There's a gold version. AA gun, and then we have a light cruiser gun, it's AP. This is overall, for gear wise, this is a pretty solid one to farm. This one, gear, fire control radar, pretty nice. Uh, extra hit, extra damage for your back line. Or you can put it on a heavy cruiser, but I would recommend putting it on your back line for the extra hit, because they like that. It's an HE, CA gun, yep. Pretty nice. This one, CL gun, I think I used it as a secondary on a battleship at one point. Yeah, I think I might have used it there. Uh, this is an AP CA gun. Decently nice. AA gun. It's whatever. There was a... Uh, I I skipped over it. Let me go over here real quick to this menu. Yes. So, what's this? 3-3. Three, three. Make sure to grab one or two copies of this gun. This is extremely useful for Ayanami, Shimakaze, any destroyer who has a barrage tied or a buff tied to how often they shoot and doesn't have a great firepower stat. This is extremely good for them. It has the fastest rate of fire of any destroyer gun. So make sure to grab that. Apologies for reading that. It's very good. Make sure you absolutely get that. We have the monitors. Uh, they have barrages. I mean, that's all they have. What, what their special thing is, is that they have lower, lower oil costs than, say, a battle cruiser or a battleship. Uh, but in the era of the oil cap, after Chapter 8, I believe, there's no... They kind of... Fell out of use. It's unfortunate. Four four is a good one for ships to farm. Get unicorn, really good healer. Let's get in for the vanguard. And also heal the entire fleet. First time for battle, so good. Not the best, but still very good. Very worthwhile to get. Cleveland, a very good light cruiser, very good AA, 
uh, buffs the whole ship, whole fleet. So, definitely worthwhile grabbing her. Very usable for most of the game. Indianapolis, once again, tank. Amazon, uh, what's nice, if you want to use her for her and three other destroyers, or two other destroyers, sorry, you can only use three ships in the Vanguard for PR farming, because now PR ships, you can just use Vanguard and main fleet. You don't have to use light cruisers for light cruisers, destroyers for destroyers. You can use, as long as it's the same faction or the required factions, then it's fine. But EXP buff, that's what I used her for when I had her. Extra damage, reduced damage taken, and also to the destroyer. So use her in a destroyer fleet if you're going to. That's it. And then gear, it's pretty decent. You know, this is early game. So nothing too crazy yet in terms of gear other than the Helldiver and that destroyer gun. Make sure you get those. As well as the steam catapult in the toolbox. Those are also very good. All right, so. Chapter five. Apologies for delay. Let me go over to chapter five. And pull it up again. So you get the first gold piece of gear. This is a destroyer main gun. Gives firepower and anti-air, so it's really nice. It's kind of just a, a really standard general use HE destroyer gun and a good secondary. So good to grab. And it's 20 copies to get. Apologies, need to pause again for some water. So that's very good to grab. And it's got the lower rarity version. So while you're farming this, you can also get the weaker version to supplement while you're waiting to get this. Also has the boiler, HP and speed, pretty nice. Let's see, some planes, then we'll use them. A uh, torpedo bomber, I'm gonna guess this is a parallel torpedo, which is okay for mob fleets. What's preferred for mob fleets? Uh, fighter, I believe this one's just very fast. That's a special thing about it. Got a bomb on it, a so pretty weak bomb. As for ships, the one of note for the stage is Helena. Now what's real special about Helena is this radar scan skill that lets her debuff all enemies. And in terms of debuffing, she's one of the best, if not the best. And when you get to radar scan plus, she gets two skills, by the way, when she uh, retrofits, so that's really nice, too. But debuffs enemies, and then if she has the SG radar equipped, she gets increased evade, and she's the one issue with her. There's a couple issues with her. She's not very, she's very squishy, so she dies incredibly quick, so the extra evade is nice. And the... Uh, her skill activates four seconds faster than uh, 20 seconds faster. So what you, what's important for is if you're using a battleship fleet, they fire their barrages. The barrages are ready slightly faster than carriers. So what you would do is have the SG radar on Helena for a battleship fleet, but not for a carrier fleet. Just for timing purposes, so it's a lot easier to work with. And then she can also uh, restore repeat of damage taken. And so she was nice also on Eagle Union front lines. What you could do is have her in the middle. I always recommend having her in the middle slot just so she takes less damage. And she has shields around here. And she also buffs the evade of the ship in your third slot. So that would be the one on the rightmost position. Yeah, she's very nice overall really nice if she wasn't so squishy and if this wasn't a 60 percent chance this for a long time it was working really well for me but i just stopped using her after a while because it was just too inconsistent 
for uh, doing bosses. It was getting really frustrating. Uh, Z1, I believe she just buffs. Here's other Z class. And then she uh she basically becomes a mini Nimi. That's uh basically the same skill as Nimi has. Or maybe Laffy has one of the two. But she buffs a lot of the different destroyers from the Iron Blood. That's nice. Uh we have a Hellcat. Really nice uh, for AA purposes. It's not as fast as zero, but it does give more. It is better for anti-air. I use this for a long time. Really good. Really like it. And also, it can be upgraded. I think the... I'm not sure which one of these two is the better version, but I think it's Tiger Cat. It's also very good once you get that upgraded. More torpedoes. Uh, so the, this dive bomb of the Suisse, you want it, you'd rather have this version, the Type 3, so the gold. But what's really good about this, it's a very fast dive bomber. So it helps you get your carriers firing faster. And so if you have a carrier that infects a slow, this is a definite one to grab for that carrier in particular. That way she can fire off her skill. That slows the enemy, so it actually slows the enemy before your other carriers shoot off. Or if you're using a ship, a carrier that buffs other ships' aviation, like Long Island does and some others do, then make sure you have uh, this on them so they get to fire first. Uh, Queen Elizabeth is here. She buffs the Royal Navy ships. She is a unfortunate curse of not having great default art. So I, I think they don't use that art very often. They've uh, given her a lot of skills. Let's see. I don't think it's going to load for me. Poo-poo uh, -poo internet. Low worm. Destroyer. It's interesting. Uh, she's evasion. And she does make sure Vanguard do more ramming damage. Which, I I don't know how I feel about this skill, because you don't really want to be ramming unless absolutely necessary. I wasn't even aware of the ramming effect until World 14 came out, and I was doing that. And I realized that, I thought just the enemy could ram and did damage. I didn't realize you could also ram into them and slow them down and do damage to them. But I wouldn't recommend... <laughs> using her for that, because that's just kind of detrimental. You know, she's, she's an option. Atlanta buffs AA. Really good AA. All the Atlanta class have incredibly good anti-air. Juno, another Atlanta class. She is very good for PvP. So at default, extra HP. Pressure fit or heals when she sinks. Uh, she's a there's a piece of gear you have when you have uh, Arizona, a bunch of the ships that sunk during Pearl Harbor. You get, once you get them, their rarities up. You get a piece of gear called the Pearl's Tears. It has a similar effect to the skill right here. And then retrofit is just a better version of that. Extra barrage, extra healing, and good AA. So, really nice to use. Extremely good for the uh, for PvP. Can be a real pain for your enemies if you have her and your ships are getting low. She falls first. She's a really good heal. Uh, this does give her make her not sink during exercises for the first time around. So it's really nice. Gonna be trying her out soon. So I've been neglecting her, unfortunately. 5-3, uh, this is more for heavy units than the Helldiver. I would just say it's a lot slower than Helldiver, pretty sure. Use the Helldiver. Just the aviation stat difference is not that important. Just use the Helldiver instead of this. 
uh, drop tank or blimp gives kind of a survival gear for carriers. That's nice to have. And then also buffs carriers again. So yeah, very, very nice. Uh, a gun, a gun, the weaker version of this. I wouldn't worry about it. We have Hornet here. Uh, I could do an extra airstrike and these planes don't get shot down, which is nice. And it has a 25% chance to do double damage. So could be good, especially if you have her shoot off very fast. Cleveland, once again, good to grab. The slots here. Uh, 5 4, you have a good AA gun. I would say grab it if you can. Uh, the maintenance crane, don't bother. Don't bother making them. You're going to get them from the uh, chests, the tech boxes. And you're going to you're gonna get the rainbow tech boxes in the month. You'll get them from other stuff. And you will face nothing but disappointment because you'll get the gold crane when you could have gotten actual good gear. That's worth grabbing. Uh, this ship drop list, we've already covered everyone here. So it's decent to grab. You have Nelson and Rodney in the same one. So if you want to get both at the same time, you can farm this. Unicorn's also here. Very, very nice. I'm not going to cover the SOS missions because those just more to do with submarines. And submarines are not an early game thing to worry about if you have them. It's worthwhile throw one or two in the dorm, but you can kind of put them off for now. But just kind of keep them in the back of your mind that those are important for later. All right, chapter six, SG radar. So for Helena, nice to grab a uh, weaker version, some guns there. So whatever a uh, vessel is a repair ship. She can heal and then once you start a sortie and she's in the fleet, you get emergency repairs so you can heal up your ships while during a battle. So that could be nice for later on. And I think she has good AA. Leave. Yeah, so she has this AA gun, AA gun, and an auxiliary gear. So maybe just a toolbox on her, keep her health up, and just deal with planes. Helena's here. Uh, these two aren't here in Ian, so I'm not going to go over them. Yeah, SG radar. So it's a good map to get Helena started on. This gun, pretty nice. Nice HE light cruiser gun. I believe it's the Belfast gun for it's referred to. Maybe not, but uh, yeah, this is pretty good, pretty solid. Also good as a secondary. So uh, yeah, overall that's pretty good to grab. Survival gear and the gyroscope. Extra speed. Well, it's not really survival, but extra speed, extra accuracy. It's not the greatest. It's an option. The BB gun. This one's decent. Not the best, but it is decent. Bigger version of that gun. Another BB gun. AP. So you can start getting some BB guns here. York Nexter. They're, uh, they're okay. Extra firepower. Less damage from the bomb ships and burning extra crit and oh that's actually pretty good uh ignore enemy armor type so a gun that has good firepower good reload very very nice uh 150 150 150 modifiers so that's very good so it's worthwhile to retrofit her if you're going to use her An extra, I don't think, oh, she does have the retrofit. At least she's just more of a tankier version. And she has the giant hunter that uh, Achilles and some of the other Royal Navy light cruisers had. Yeah, that's, that's decent. Fuso and Yamashiro. They're 
They're okay. I used Fuso for a long time just because I really liked her. Uh, her skills, you know, fire, extra fire power is nice. But she has retrofit and so does Yamashiro and it's something to be wary of. If you want to use them and use them effectively, do not finish the retrofit. When it says change to aviation battleship, do not do it. It sounds really cool. I was really excited. I didn't look into it very much. I said, oh, you know, planes and big guns. That's got to be cool. Uh, they can only equip seaplanes, which are not good. They are very weak. There's one that's okay. And they only get to fire off, I think they fire off three seaplanes at once. But don't, if you're, yeah, just don't do it. Like their retrofit art, that's fine. You can go and uh, have two copies of them. But yeah, it's, it's very underwhelming how they were treated with that regards. Uh, some of the other aviation battleships like Issei, I believe is a lot better. 6-3 has another battleship gun. It's all ammo, it's okay. Uh, this is probably one of the best budget battleship guns. Pretty good reload rate. Uh, HE, really solid. There's another gun that looks very similar to this, but it's gold. It's this one. Do not make it. Do not build it. It is... Very, very bad. It's referred to as the confetti gun. You know, it's as a different ammo type. Can it show me the, uh, the barrage, what the shot pattern looks like? But uh, it looks like you're shooting confetti and it does very little damage. So, uh, it, uh, it's not good. So it's definitely a waste of resources to invest in this. So if you see it, run. Do not use it. Uh, this is another really good BB gun. From what I've found. And then the auto loader. Extra reload, extra firepower. Really nice. As for ships, you can get Arizona here again. A bunch of other familiar faces. And then Arc Royal. Arc Royal, prior to Implacable, was one of the best ships for a boss carrier fleet there was. She's still incredibly good because Implacable is not always available. She's only run once so far. So Arc Royal, want to grab her for if you're going to be running a dedicated carrier boss fleet. It is because, well, she shoots her airstrike the uh she fires an extra airstrike with along with it that slows enemies by 60 percent for eight seconds that is incredibly good so she's a mainstay for as, as a slower in a carrier fleet and then she can do double damage for a 25 percent chance too so that's that's nice i wouldn't rely on it but she does have an incredible damage potential and this is before her retrofit the retrofit just makes her a bit stronger. Reduces A of enemies so our planes will get shot down. And then reduces damage dealt by uh let's see. Increases damage dealt. My apologies, I thought it was decreased to uh but increased damage dealt by destroyers and rolling vanguard ships. Which if you understand her personality, you will understand why that is stipulation for the buffs for those ships. Especially destroyers. 6 4, nice. Uh, torpedoes. I'm looking at them. It says torpedo, and I'm just blanking on what it's called. Just an upgrade of the purple ones from earlier. Really nice. Better for manual mode because they're not magnetic, but they do more damage. So, overall, really nice to have. 
And then you can upgrade them to this, which is just a better version on the gear lab. And then, yeah, the, there's an AA gun. It's okay. This is just an AA gun that uh, I kind of have laying around. And if I just need an extra one, I, haven't, I don't think I've used them in a while. I would just throw this on because gold is good in terms of AA guns. This one in terms of elite and rare ships, all the same faces. Uh, this one does have Yudachi, who can be very good after she's even before she's retrofitted, but after retrofit. Very, very nice. Increased firepower, reload and evade. Increased damage against ignite enemies. So if she has a HE gun, really nice. And for first start seconds of a battle, extra crit rate and crit damage for Vanguard ships. So if you run her with another destroyer. Uh, or a ship like Noshiro, who also buffs bang, uh, torpedo damage in a mob fleet where you finish things quickly. That's really good. She also gets extra evade, less damage taken, five special barrage, and all out assault. So what's really nice about Yudachi, especially for late game, I used her for World 14. So she's definitely worth investment too. I don't think they have her retrofit gear in the metal shop yet. You do need this piece of gear from a mini game. Oh, it's not showing. But there's a mini game you have to do. It's run twice. I assume at some point they're going to uh, add it to one of the shops, like the San Diego gear or the War Spike gear. So definitely for World 14, think about getting her leveled up because she has two barrages, which is very good. And she's a destroyer, so she's fast. Got a good torpedo. She has an ASW stat. 203. It's pretty decent. And I'll go into more about why that's important once we're later on. All right. World 7, I believe this one has some uh, not fun stages on it. One of these is just like a conga line of death in terms of enemies. You have to run up gauntlet. Pull it up. Uh, ships for 7-1, everyone we've seen before. A gun. Gold is good. Gold is always good, we've seen this before. Uh, swordfish is okay. Some, I believe, formidable. I think weather ship gets an extra buff when they equip it. Uh, it does not say so, but on there's some ships that say, oh, if you have X gear, you do more damage. Or you get extra reload, or whatever. Uh, let's see. Once again, same ships we've seen before. This is, okay, so 7-1. Uh, look at the spawn pattern of this. You should have a conga line of pain and misfortune. So make sure you're well leveled for this one. You have to fight five enemies. And so sometimes, and usually it's war. Because you'll think, oh, I'll just my mob fleet along because you're going to take things out. But then you realize that your boss fleet either gets stuck behind a spawn over here. Or there's still a bunch of enemies in the way of the boss. So this map sucks i do not like this map it is not my friend but back to 7-2 this aa gun very good it's called the roomba i really like it it's i have a bunch of them so i'm a big fan of the roomba i also like its name that people gave it a uh, good ap ca gun once again this is just the better version of what we saw before i quite like it Throw it on, like Rune from the PR. Has this BB gun again. Very nice. Maybe this is called the Duck Gun. If you want to nickname it. So it kind of looks like a duck spill. Uh, normal. At least it's secondary. I think it's just nothing too spectacular. I believe this is the one that King George V wants to have. Yeah, so King George V gets an extra buff, so you grab her from the War Archives. 
then she gets an extra buff from having this. But in terms of ships, there's Isuzu, extra AA, and then... Well, that's kind of kind of stinky. So, it's just Sakura gun equipped, takes less damage. But if she has any other faction's main gun equipped, decrease AA gun efficiency by 50%. Which will take it down to 125, which isn't nice. Kind of bad. But buffs main everything else's efficiency. And has two barrages, so that's actually kind of nice with the barrages. But yeah, that kind of that 50% detriment. And uh, Sakura Empire ships. Oh, it actually is just a pretty decent AA now that I'm looking at it, so maybe it's not too bad. But it does hurt her a lot. Yeah, retrofit. Not a bad option for her. Oh wow, she looks completely different. Forgot about that. Uh, seven four. You have the monitors again. You have Hosho. She buffs. Uh, exp gain. That's the main reason why you want to use her. She's a yeah. She's, she's a light uh aircraft carrier. She has guns and no AA gun. And limited gear she can equip with. So fires and torpedo bombers, no dive bombers, so no hell diver. A little unfortunate, but if you wanna, you know, speed up your XP gain of your carriers, that's really nice. Uh, overall, I wouldn't say this map is worthwhile farming just because this is only from the boss. The rest can uh, spawn on anywhere. It's pretty decent, once again, for manual play. It does turn into the rainbow homing gear from the gear lab, which is nice, but that's a long ways away. I've only gotten one, so uh, chapter eight. Let me hide that real quick. While I move the screen over. So this is the last stage where there is no oil cap, so oil cost cap to my knowledge, which is unfortunate because there's actually a SSR ship you can farm here. But uh, the good AA gun, or good DD gun that gets AA. Uh, Inazuma. I haven't even gotten her. She, uh, she buffs other destroyers. If you like her, by all means. Uh, torpedoes. Ikazuchi, once again. Goes well with Inazuma. So, yeah, you can use them together in Destroyer Fleet with uh, the light cruiser you get from Chapter 12 or 11 that uh, bust destroyers and light cruisers. Or runner with Noshiro. It's like I remember Noshiro's name. Let's see. This gun again, pretty nice. Have Nachi. Absorb damage, so tank, but she is rare, rarity. She's blue, not as good, which is unfortunate. And then 8-4, good gun, good other gun options. Good variety of ships drop, and you have Maya, the first farmable member of the, the Takao flat. Ugh. The Takao class. Oh my goodness. Uh, chance to faster reload. Chance to double torpedoes. Which I believe most of the Takao class has. Uh, increases AA. Reload. Change the spread angle. So I, I'm assuming it makes it narrower. So that more ships get, uh, more torpedoes get fired in a closer area. Yep, so that's that's pretty nice. Increases evade. So yeah, with her uh with her augment gear, I think really good. It's a tank. I don't know use it before because she has had better reload and double torpedoes. So I wasn't a huge fan of her. Oh, I just realized I just went through all of that and did not have the browser window up. My apologies. 
So, Inazuma again. My apologies for that. That was very silly of me. That DD gun. Torpedo. Ikazuchi. Nachi the tank. Well, if you want. Uh, this like cruiser gun. And then Maya again. Sorry, I was highlighting stuff and I was looking at stuff. So I forgot to actually pull it up so you can see what I'm looking at. I'm not just talking like a crazy person. So Maya, now that she has her augment gear, probably pretty good. I haven't used her. I haven't gone back to farmer. I kind of just I scrapped her for space. But the unfortunate thing is this is the last stage that does not have the oil cap. So you might want to be mindful of your fleet composition for farming for Maya or anything else in this stage. Yeah, so I will hide that and make sure to bring it back after I move to chapter 9. Move the tab over to 9. Do -do -do. I'll turn that back on. So, Chapter 9 implements the oil caps for maps in clearing mode. This applies to events as well. So, it shows how much oil it's capped at. And you get extra coins for doing clearing mode. So, it's really nice. So, after Chapter 9 is when you really want to do serious farming. Just to so get the extra coins. 9-1, uh, it's got this, but it's only this uh, AA gun, but it only drops on the boss. It's not really worth it. Uh, Charles Auburn and Arizona are here, but hopefully you grabbed them earlier. Uh, don't even bother with a maintenance crane. Just don't do it. The monitors, uh, Radford and Jones, some more destroyers, the Fletcher class, I believe. Or, sorry, Jenkins, not Jones. Uh, you know, fill out your collection. Get that collection up. 9-3, once again, it has the zero from the, uh, the zero fighter from the boss drop, but it's all from the boss, so it's kind of unfortunate. It does have this gun and this gun here. It's going to always destroy your Sugar A, Glow Worm, and drops Nicholas. Another Fletcher class. And let's see. The Nick increases firing with firing main gun, extra evade, and less damage from planes, full firepower. And then Battle of Kula Gulf, extra firepower, torpedo reload. And then increase damage taken if a ship gets lowered, health lowered. And then if it's one of the Helenas. He'll start heals him for eight percent. So with Helena, it's gonna be too bad. Does she have a retrofit? Yes, okay, it's, it did say retrofit. I thought it said uh augment gear. It's nice they're adding that so other ships can get buffed as well. 9-4, once again, this all the uh, gun only drops from the uh, the boss, which is unfortunate, but there is a unique boss ship. She is elite, so she's a bit easier to farm than, say, Maya. Extra reload for your fleet and anti-air mode it is what it is. She's a, uh, she's a destroyer. So if you like her, use her. That's, that's another thing. Just if you like the ship, you can make use of the ship. As we will see that I do in the next chapter. Let me move this over to my favorite chapter in the game because of its dropship. Browser's back up. Uh, oil cap for this. More coins. Decent amount of coins. 10-1. It's got this piece of AA gear. Pretty nice. You can drop from anywhere. Unicorn. 
Hopefully you grabbed all the elites before them. 10-2, my favorite stage. Got the SG radar. If you haven't grabbed one already, it's got Lexington and Saratoga. It's got Gridley again, and it's got the most important ship in the game. Of course. You saw my home screen. Honolulu's there. She, uh, she only has the full power power skill, so she's not the greatest. Uh, but I like using her. She's my favorite. Uh, once, if you ever, like, 125 and Oath, she's on par with Cleveland at 125, so... Yeah, so she's, she's decent. Uh, let's see. And one of these... Oh, yes, so 10-1... This spawns a conga, conga line of the explosive bomb boats that, like, kamikaze you. They go suicide right into your face. They come all in a row towards your uh, your flagship. So make sure you have a battleship there with a fast-firing secondary that can just shoot through all of them. Or some kind of barrage or something to deal with that. So that's something to be aware of when you're doing this map. Uh, this one, the boss spawns two spawns Takao and Otago next to the boss. So has something to deal with that. N3 drops St. Louis and the uh, good DD gun uh, buffs her uh, well, some of her stats, anti-air mode. Uh, has the toolkit, so it's a decent stage to farm. Once again, fire control radar. And let's see. And then 10-4. So this is another really good one to farm if you're going to be using a torpedo fleet and you're kind of running on a budget. Has torpedo mount. And then has Jinsu as the boss drop. Now what she does, extra reload and torpedo stat for light crews and destroyers. Very nice. If you haven't gotten Noshiro from the War Archives, this is another good option. It is kind of late in the game, but it's an option. Uh, let's be more tanky with our retrofit skill. And extra crit for your torpedoes and crit damage. So yeah, she's a really good torpedo buffer for your Vanguard if you run double destroyer with her or the destroyer light cruiser. They have like her, Udachi, and then Noshiro as all ships you can farm. That's a pretty good combo there. If you want to do good destroyer damage, or good torpedo damage, sorry. Move the screen over. Swap over to chapter 11. We're almost through this. Open the browser back up. And oil costs, even more. I believe either 11-1 or 11-2 is one of the most oil to coin efficient maps in the game. Uh, you can double check me on this because it shows right here, coins for oil. So it's really, but so this is another good one to farm just for coins and EXP. Good destroyer gun again. We've seen all these ships. Uh, good budget options here for secondaries or for submarines. 11-2. Good torpedoes. Agano's here. Uh, increased firepower destroyers. And then reduce damage taken by your carriers. So she's okay. She's an elite. She's got, you know, elite stats. What else we've seen before? 11 3. We have the good A guns again. Cleveland's here. We also have Sendai, who has who buffs, who's like a mini Jinsu, but lower rarity. But when you retrofit her, she gets a very interesting skill that could potentially be useful for you in World 14 that she fires flares. Now what flares do 
is what they do. They spawn an area on the screen where if enemies go in them, it reduces their evade and lets you hit them more. Um, yeah, it says that on the screen right there. But in Chapter 14, there's a special mechanic that I'll go in detail when I make a video on Chapter 14 and a, a whole guide on that. But it disables the ship's concealment. That's the mechanic, that's what it's called, while they're in that flare. And so you can hit them better. That's really nice. But just be aware, her stats are a little bit on the lower side because she's a rarely gets retrofit into an elite. And let's see. 11-4, the good AA gun again. Renown is back. This is where I grabbed her because I forgot to get her from earlier on. Columbia is here. Another Cleveland class. Uh, less damage to your flagship. AA stat. Another really good AA ship like Cleveland. And let's move on to the next one. Chapter 12. I'm a fond of this chapter as well. You get good EXP. There's a ship farmable in 12-4. So what I often do with this chapter is have a fleet just hang out in 12-4, just farm that over and over and over again for PR farming, for coin farming, for just leveling in general. So yeah, it's, it's a very nice chapter to farm. Good amount of coins. Get the zero again. Get Helena, Unicorn, but hopefully you already have them at this point. Cleveland. The uh, Torpedo Mount. EO. A uh, rare light carrier, so not the best. Uh, she does have a um, meta version of her, as you can see up here. But yeah, so. It's okay. Uh, you know, stats hurt her, but you can use her if you want. You, know, you, you can make do. Won't be as good. You know, like I use Honolulu a lot. She has the same stat problem, but, you know, if you get her leveled up, oath her, and looks like she'll be good for, uh, actually, no, it doesn't really matter, but well, for mobbing, just so your first two airstrikes do more damage. Because the boss is about to be protracted more. 12-3. This has the Suisse again. This is the gold version. This is your timing plane, like I said earlier, with the purple one. So, for making sure your slower goes first, have this at the ready. Have as their dive bomber. Junyo is here. Basically Heo, but different skin, different appearance. And 12-4, you have this, this gun again. It's normal damage or normal ammo, so it's not too special. But you have Chokai, the second farmable, a member of the Takao uh, Taka, Taka class, not Takao class. Uh, buffs herself, can buff all your other cruisers. Double damage for main gun, so she didn't have the double torpedo like some of the other members do. But she's nice. Uh, like her design. And this stage overall is just really good for farming. So you can get her. You can work on your PR EXP requirements. You can get coins. You can just level your ships in general. Uh, since she also drops here when you have her fully limit broken or if you don't really like her. You can scrap her and get medals for her. You know, 10 medals. That's a nice chunk of change for the uh, exchange shop. Let's see. Chapter 13. This is where things start getting difficult. Especially if you're severely underleveled. Let me pull up this. So, to show what the... No, it doesn't show that. The, uh, what level the enemies are, what level the boss is. Okay, let me pull this back up again. 
I don't really farm this one very much, this world at all, just because it's kind of a pain. And 12 4 is just really easy. Uh, 116, so make sure your ship's around 110 to 115 for this whole thing. 120 is preferable. I believe the last one is uh, over 120. Yeah, it's 122. So you'll be getting towards end game. And really high level, so make sure you're well leveled. And have ships with good AA and good AA guns. For this world, that's the key. Good anti-air capabilities. Um, this CL gun again, it's here. Arizona, Vestal. Uh, Vestal, you can use a um, repair ships. So Vestal or Akashi, which you get through special missions. They're nice for this because they have good AA and they can let you heal. Kashi's a bit better because she thinks she has more healing capabilities. And she does have better stats because she's SSR rarity. So she's gold. She's golden. Uh, this Zero again. Saratoga, Lexington. Uh, Heo's here is... No. So yeah. Okay. Nothing special. I just say kind of move on. 13-3 has Hornet, Yorktown, uh, Dewey is here, so for collection purposes, I probably missed one or two of the rare destroyers that dropped, I have not gone through and collected all of them yet, uh, less damage to your carriers, and increases firepower for herself, and reload, firepower reload for Gridley, when Gridley is in the same fleet. And also you have the uh, the Hellcat in here. Which is a very good AA. Once again. Like I already said. Very good AA. Airplane. And finally. 13-4. The former Flex Sage. That if you can do this. You're golden. It's not as impressive now. Because there's the level cap has been raised. And there's another world to do. But still, this is a nice one to do just for flexing that you have Bunker Hill. Uh, There's a torpedo here. I would say just focus on doing the weekly raid for torpedo stuff. The supply chain interruption, I think it's called. And then getting the bitter from the gear lab. That's the best torpedo. But other than that, anything you have is good. Just uh, don't build the submarine torp that is rainbow from Sakura Empire in the gear lab. That one is not very good at all. You only go in the gear lab and build so torpedo, submarine torpedoes, build the bitter. But yeah, this is nice to have. It's, it's kind of hard to get submarine gear, so grab these. Uh, the Tenzin AC or two, this is nice for boss fleets. It retro, it has a, I believe it, there's a Tenzin Kai as well, or as an upgraded version. But this is, uh, what's nice about this is the torpedoes it drops converge onto a target, which is very good for boss fights. So they all, if they hit, that's the key, if they hit, they all hit the boss. This is a bit of a problem. When you're facing fast bosses, like destroyers that move around a lot, or just bosses in general that move a whole lot. So this is where having a ship with a slow, like Arc Royal, is very, very good. So this is another piece of gear. If it shows up earlier, it shows up in 5-4 and 12-4. So 5-4, definitely grab it. My apologies for skipping it. <laughs> and then Bunker Hill, the, the flex ship. So if she's the, uh, if she's the flagship, she gets evasion stat. And if she's the flagship, she buffs your battleships. So you can have her in the flagship, New Jersey and Georgia, say. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend that, but that's something you could do. If she's off flagship, she buffs the five power and AA for Eagle Union Destroyers. So you could run, what would be cool is run her, Yorktown 2, the UR, and like Essex or Intrepid, that way she but Bunker Hill will buff the Vanguard, your destroyers. So you can run like Laffy, 
uh, Alanum Summoner, Cooper, stars like that. Get the more AA, and you have a good AA for your backline. And then Yorktown 2 would buff Bunker Hill and Essex, or Intrepid, or Enterprise, or any of the other uh, Yorktown classes. If she's the only CV or CVL, so this is so like if you run her, her and two battleships. Get the use of this first part of the skill. Then increase A for your main fleet. She wants an airstrike. Based on the number of CVs, and so based on carriers, does an aerial barrage, and then launches more planes. So more complex of some of the earlier ships that will give an extra torpedo bomber or whatever. Yeah, so, you know, Bunker Hill is nice to have, just so say, oh, I got Bunker Hill. You know, I'm a, I'm a gamer. All right, and now for the real gaming territory, the, uh, the hellish landscape known as, that is known as Chapter 14. I'll try not to get too deep in the weeds for Chapter 14's mechanics. It's, there's some new stuff. But just be aware, this is a very difficult, it's very hard to get started farming on this. You have to full manual everything until you get the uh, threat level to safe. And even then, you do not want to have auto search on yet. Uh, I don't I do not do that. I have it down to safe. I have the ship that drops from here. It took me ages to get her. But yeah, so unless you have an extremely good team... It's just, be aware, this is a hard, 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 can't say enough, hard chapter. 14-1 uh, has the AA gun, fire control radar, repair toolkit, and some BB guns. You also get Ashigara. Uh, and she, previously, she was only in an event, so you can actually farm her now. I believe she's in the heavy. Yeah, so she's in the heavy pool as well, and also the event pool. Uh, has a barrage, so she has two barrages, so that's kind of nice. No retrofit though, so her stats do fall behind. Extra damage to cruisers, that's nice. Let's see, 14-2, good AA gun. SG Radar, the weaker version, Torpedo Bulge, there's no gold Torpedo Bulge, so that's the best you get. DB Guns again. You get Denver, which I believe was only was built only prior to this, so another Cleveland class. Uh, full Firepower and Anti-Air Mode, so she kind of balances herself out. When, the, uh, when they both go off. So you can actually farm her now and not have to worry about the construction. Uh, we also have West Virginia in here. Uh, she has the same barrage as, let's say, Nelson, Rodney, Nagato, Mutsu, and a couple others. They all have the Big 7 barrage. Oh, it's, yeah, it's right here. So Colorado, Maryland also have the same one. But so she's also available in the core data shop, Fallen Wings, and the uh, War Archive. So it's okay. Uh, you know, you can make jokes with the song. Country roads take me home. That's that's fun. Did you get a skin from the uh, battle pass at one point? She did not. It's uh. It's Colorado I'm thinking of. 14-3 has the duck gun again. Auto loader. Advanced boiler. So okay. Okay gear. But by this point you're not you shouldn't be farming for gear from this stage. This is uh it's like get the get three stars, get any ships you missed, get out. Columbia's here again. I think I skipped over her. Uh, in chapter 14. No, I did. I, I covered her. But another Cleveland class is already stated, now that I remember. 
from a bit ago. Uh, another Japanese destroyer you can get. Reduce damage to your battleships, so most of them have in battle cruisers. So most ships at this point that have a skill similar to this are from uh, debuff damage to carriers. And she's also available in the guild shop and was a drop reward. And finally, the one we've all been waiting for, Chapter 14-4, the end of the game. So this has the SG radar, gyroscope, fuel filter, and then these two. Uh, you also get Mogami. I believe she drops. Oh, she drops in the uh, Desert Titan Red event. Uh, Mogami's nice. If she fires a bunch of torpedoes, then they'll hit. She buffs herself. So she's a pretty good candidate to have uh, magnetic torps on just so they end up hitting. Or have torpedoes with a low spread. Um, but it doesn't require them to hit the same target. So if there's a lot of enemies too, that's nice. She also retrofits into a heavy cruiser. That keeps the same armor type. So she becomes a bit more tanky. And she has anti-AP damage. That's really nice. Um, and in terms of other ships. The uh, lower rarity. Not really much to talk about. But the, uh, the Lady of the Hour, the leader of New Orleans class, New Orleans. Uh, I think she's just a decent tank. I got her. Haven't really invested in her yet. I need to. Just a flex. If she's in the Vanguard, increases damage taken. More damage for the ship in the middle. So if we have a like, destroyer in the middle... She becomes a better tank. That destroyer does more damage. That's really nice. It's a healing skill. So when she falls uh, down, she uh, has special barrage, plus a barrier that absorbs damage. And if the barrier is destroyed, heals her by 6%. And if it expires, it increases the fire power reload. So she's nothing too special, but you get to say you, you know, have farmed 14-4 and have New Orleans, which is a flex in itself. Uh, she has her flex skin too, so. You know, if you get this when it reruns during like Black Friday or whatever, then you can really flex to your guildmates and friends that I got New Orleans and I have the skin. Bunker Hill's in a, in a similar situation. But yeah, it's a, uh, you know, nice to have. Nice, nice ship. But that is, that is all. That is all of the campaign. And my thoughts on what the farm and what the gear available is. I uh, hope it was helpful. I know I kind of missed some stuff as I was going along. I decided not to script this because it was just, I want to get this out quickly. So it's helpful and not take two weeks. And by that time, new players have well passed or may have moved past. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope this was helpful, most importantly. And I will see you around. Bye-bye.